what is going on guys it is your boy Cecil here bringing you guys a video here today bringing you guys a Photoshop tutorial how to create your own very own cool neon header sort of design here so basically if you guys want to have any idea what I've been doing uh, uh like stream wise at least like two weeks ago or so we did a really cool neon header theme where I took a uh, uh, individual's personal sort of like design and I kind of revamped it to the way I would like to do it it took so long it was very hard it was very different it came out completely different as well because I had no idea what I was doing so it was very stressful but we came out with something very very dope very cool very clean and uh, I think it's just something that you guys can just take as like a foundation and just elevate it to whatever the heck you guys want to be. This is very, it's almost, it's almost like clean. It's almost kind of like bare bones in a way too, but that just leaves a lot of open space for you guys to really do whatever the heck you guys want to do for it. Um, but as you can see, it's just really cool. It's just like a kind of like a cool, uh, I guess a layer style with a little exaggerated sort of cool little, uh, uh, accent strokes here. Um, as well as like a little stroke right here as well in the background, a little subtext, the neon as well. And I use circles for this actually. So if you guys want to, you guys can of course replace the circles with any shape whatsoever, like a square in for instance. That's what I did for the first time I did this on stream. Um, so yeah, I think it just looks very, very nice. You can see this little, uh, little pattern uh, right in here with this little nice smooth background here with a nice little gradient we're going to be using. Um, just kind of like really creates that really nice, you know, pattern and contrast or, or texture contrast as well as of course a, a more of a dark to, you know, light contrast. Um, it just looks really dope. I did, but I put a purple. It could be. I'm gonna bring be doing dark gray. I just want to show you guys in purple. That way you guys can see, I guess, uh, how it looks with a little presentation. Um, so uh, yeah. Anyway, two likes on the video because a secret down below as always, guys. Will mostly be the PSD of the video as you guys see. And I'm just curious what you guys are gonna make like elevated to. I know you guys always like to take my tutorials for you know inspiration and whatnot. I'm really curious what you guys are gonna do to add on to this. Um, just like even like little flurry stocks, little like stars. I have no idea. But anyway, let's go ahead and hop into today's video here today. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, if you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe and all that cool stuff and uh, leave a like because the two likes, you know. All right, homies. So let's go ahead and get this thing started right away. I'm gonna get rid of a little example here. And I'm gonna make it red for now. Um, so to start this thing off right, right away, the background that I'm personally using, you guys can use whatever the heck you guys want to use. However, for the gradient overlay for what I did use was a really cool little purple um, blend mode is on lightness. So I'm, I believe that there's a uh, color on the back of this. Let me just turn this off for a second, right? There's a purple on the back of this. So basically, if I were to click, let me just show you guys really quickly. That was the most awkward transition. I could have just turned it off. Um, click on this. So the purple I'm using like on the actual background, you can choose it whatever color you guys want to. But um, for just like reference of how you might want to choose your color, if you want to, if you don't want to go to purple, you want to go to blue. You can choose this purple, move the hue, right, and then go to the uh, gradient overlay and basically choose the same exact positioning, but just change the hue in order to change your colors and get it very accurate to how mine would be, right? Um, anyway, that purple hex code would be hex code 270752. So once you have that, I ended up putting a gradient overlay on it. Just a very simple little gradient overlay with a little uh, style on linear um, angle at 90, uh, excuse me, negative 90. And my scale's at 108. That can be at 100. It really doesn't really matter. Um, we're going to click on this. So for my shadow color here, we had hex code 160323. For the middle, we had hex code 100, uh, 1A0729. And then for the light uh, highlights over here on the right hand side, we had three nine. So why? I might have some kind of problem in my head. Um, three D zero eight six four. Uh, what? That was weird. I apologize. Um, anyway, right. And I have my blend mode on lightness, so change it from normal to lightning. I just said lightness. My bad. <sighs> okay, I gotta relax. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this thing going right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll turn this off for a second. And I'm going to give you guys the exact same background color that I personally use for mine. So what I ended up doing was this is actually, uh, there's a solid uh, color below this uh, gradient overlay, by the way. So the solid color for the purple that I use here, by the way, if you guys want to choose any color you guys want to choose, if you guys were to say like, hey, I want to use blue, I don't want to use purple, I have a different color scheme in mind, choose in my same direction right here. So you can even, if you wanted to, hex code 2707. Uh, it's five two, right? And if you want to say, hey, I want to use blue, just take the hue table, which is on the right hand side. I have something in my eye out. Um, the hue table on the right hand side here, and just move it to blue. That way, you guys can really get this. Uh, I guess a very similar color scheme to mine, as well as when we go into gradient overlay, right? Uh, I do have a gradient overlay on this as well, just a very simple linear style with the angle at negative ninety and the scale at one hundred percent. We're gonna change that too, right? And my blend mode's on lighten, so if you guys want to change it from normal, opacity's at fifty percent. And when you go into the gradient tab, uh, tab, uh, table here, on the left-hand side, which happened to be your shadows, um, the hex code that I used for this was 160323. For the middle area here, just to give me like a really cool sort of like a little strip sort of highlight in the middle, was uh, hex code 1A0789. 
zero seven two nine and then for the highlights over here on the right hand side we have three d zero eight six four so in any one of those like little tables here if you want to use the same color scheme or the same exact hex code and i say hey i want to use blue again like i said before just change it a little bit further down it'll get you the most accurate uh color to how mine would look so you don't have a a weird sort of uh i guess ratio to colors and whatnot right so i'm gonna go ahead and just say that is the whole little green overlay and that's our background very simple good to cl uh, clear cut background right so the first thing i'm going to do right after i do that is i'm gonna go ahead and use a dark purple so whatever color scheme you're using if it's a red background use a dark red and basically as you can see if you look at this little new table here um i'm gonna put it on a new layer really quickly right just so you guys can see the difference between a purple and a uh, pure black because there is a difference and I would like for you to understand that because if I were to put this on black as you can see the purple of course stands out uh, from a black right so just choose on your hex or excuse me you're on your foreground table right somewhere really really close to black which is only on the bottom right somewhere really close to those black values but move it up a little bit basically from whatever your your color scheme happens to be so if it was red just move it to where a red would be if it was green green you know what I mean so very simply just take that into consideration because it's not black it will ruin the sort of like blending of how it should look right so we're not actually making a solid background though we're gonna be using a brush right we're gonna be using a soft brush right so just simply choose a brush on your general brushes soft brush pretty good size hardness all the way at zero and what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply just click a couple times just to create a very cool sort of ratio here now without these little darker spots around you can see the color looks very like it's very bright but as soon as you bring in these little simple black hits or not black but dark purple hits you get this really sort of cool sort of 3d and or um a battle between what's the foreground what's the background that's exactly what you want for neon theme um this looks really, really cool as well this i don't know if you guys can see this little strip right here and this area right here feels very glossy and it's this perfect this perfect amount of uh brush hits that you probably need if i need to i go back in there and i will just say this in our, under our background color right um but yeah very simple once you have that you're pretty good to go and what i'm gonna go ahead and do right now is gonna put the exact same text so i'm gonna put what i put neon you put neon header right so let's go ahead the font of course that i use is right here you can look up top left float flat i think is that what how you pronounce it i'm not entirely sure let me check and see i guess yep that's a pretty good size and for the uh text color what i ended up doing was i used a very nice simple offset uh, blue here excuse me offset white but a little bit of a blue hint uh blue hint so on my right hand side for the hue table we change it to blue and it goes right before you touch the left hand side fully and right before you hit the top so right around here just like so press ok right so we're gonna have the word header there and we're gonna have the word neon right at the top just like so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just shrink this down and we're gonna go to our little character table so if you don't have windows uh, character enabled just make sure you have that right there right that's what that is you can take this drop this down to like nine or so and take your va which is your split and uh, basically make this a little bit more um even for my header i believe i have it split by 20 so if you guys zero is uh, zero is fine too but 20 just i just put it just a little bit um just because usual i don't know i like the sizing to be a little more uh uh spread it out anyway right so we got something like this now and then we're going to center this to be like so cool so now we have our text basically all good to go so this is the only i guess this is the most uh, neon part of the entire header design basically because this is the part where you're just going to be using a very simple linear how you say outer glow and a inner shadow or inner glow we'll see right now a uh, header i already saved the style so i get the exact same thing so the style is right here i ended up using inner glow and outer glow i don't know why i got that one confused um but basically if i go to inner glow here by the way the reason why we kept the inside white is because we want that to highlight in a sense to be like a light bulb right most light bulbs uh, for neon signs would be like a white bulb because it uh, radiates the most color and the most sort of like highest tone right so it feels very like in your face in your eyes kind of thing so for the inner glow here we have the of course bun one are normal um opacity 100 percent the choke at zero the size at seven if you guys want to you can change the size on this one to whatever you feel like um like maybe even around here is pretty good um, what did I say? 17 was the size, right? I think so. I hope so. Right? If I want to move it down, I don't know if that... You don't want to have too much white going. You want to have more color than your white. So I think the 17 that I had was personally probably the best. Um, so yeah, we're going to keep it on 17 personally. So if you guys want to change that around, if your font happens to be a little more, I guess, thicker or thinner, you're going to have to change that accordingly, of course. And then for your outer glow here, I would just say 15 size. 
nope, I think I changed the 13 for that exact reason. So, my blend mode on uh, normal, opacity is at 89. If you guys want to put it up, I guess you guys can. I don't know why I put it at 89. I'm going to just keep it at 100 for this uh, case right here. Um, but basically, spread is at 0 and your size is at 13. As the reason why you just saw me say, hey, what about 15? If I look at 15 really quick, you get this part. Uh, my friend actually pointed this out when I showed him the actual final result. We ended up changing the actual uh, uh, layer style, um, right? If I put it up too much, you get this very weird glow and then you kind of get you see how you see the inside looks more gray than it does white we don't want to cancel out those colors that we just originally put in the first place so 18 wouldn't look good you put it up even further it doesn't look neon it just looks like you just put an outer glow on it we want to make sure we have that neon feel and not that's just outer glow right and if i put it too short it doesn't feel exactly right as well so you don't want it to look too blurry that's why i kind of said what did i have it at i believe my outer glow we'll just put it on 13 right yeah 13 is what i think i had it on too so Press OK, and that's what your basic little header, um, how your text effect should be. And by the way, for this, the font that I did use, like I said, is right here, right? However, if you guys want to choose a font, please make sure you guys choose something that's very, very skinny um, and or maybe looks like pretty fun. Like this right here probably wouldn't work too much of a neon theme, but I didn't, no neon sign has this direct sort of like um, font to use, but thicker fonts are harder to work with for the neon theme. But I did use something like, I think I used this one for the last time I did it. This is really, really cool as well. If you guys want to choose like a font like this, which has like a brush, that's kind of fun. Um, it could be something for a nice stylistic choice. But for now, we're going to keep it for the normal little basic sort of uh, sans serif kind of font. Not sans serif, but you guys know what I mean, right? <clears throat> so now that I have this, I'm going to basically copy this layer style, copy layer style, right? And then throw this on the neon uh, sub, -tech, uh, sub, sub text part. There we go. And for this right here, as you see, I'm going to zoom in. You can see how it's too blue. Of course, is in that case, you got to take the inner glow, double click on that, take the size and drop this down. So for uh, that, a nice accordingly, right? Perfect. So now it looks more neon, right? Too much uh, blue is going to end up making it look very, very awkward. So now that I have this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of the word neon because I already know what I did originally for this. I made this uh, yellow, uh, like a yellow orange pattern or a yellow blue pattern, excuse me. So I'm going to make a duplicate of the word neon. So control J on my keyboard and or if you want to, you can take the word neon drag it down right to the left of the delete button uh the uh yeah the delete trash button here and it'll make a duplicate for you as well like that so i'm just going to click on this little eyeball here because i'm gonna hide one just in case i mess up and what i'm going to do for this first uh copy that we did we're going to right click on this and rasterize layer style just like so then i'm gonna create a new layer um, we're gonna take this layer and we're gonna clipping mask this which means right click create clipping mask that will basically make sure that whatever's on this layer that we currently created just now this this little clip mask layer right here we're gonna call this just x just so you guys know this x layer we just created basically whatever's on this layer here will only ever show on the neon copy layer which is this layer that i'm turning on and off so i'm gonna go on the x layer here and i'm gonna go over click over here we're gonna make this yellow i don't know if what yellow we're gonna be using in today's video i forgot to like get the uh, the exact color but with a soft brush i'm gonna take the first n highlight over it make it blue or yellow excuse me and click over it a couple times that way you have this rice not rice right nice cool little uh kind of orange or yellow to blue kind of ratio there you don't have to you can do that as well with the header but we're gonna do for the header part was gonna make it like a really cool little stroke so what we're gonna do for this is <clears throat> same thing we're gonna make a duplicate of the word header control j is what i'm gonna personally use i'm gonna drag the duplicate uh duplication header dupe right we're gonna drag this duplicated header uh text right below the original so this is the original we're gonna call this og so you guys know you don't get lost and for the duplicated one we're gonna go into the effects right below it right into the effects and we're gonna leave i believe let's just drag it out for a second um i named the wrong ones i'm, a, I'm an idiot for that one oops this is the uh boom i don't think it actually mattered whatsoever let all right i just mixed myself up and i'm sorry for mixing you up we're gonna call this og and then this one right here we're gonna call duplicate right yeah i don't know why i thought that was mixed up my apologies anyway we're gonna take our fill lower this all the way down to zero for the duplicate right so basically on that duplicated one on the header whichever one's on the bottom just make sure there's one on the bottom and for that one you want to make sure your fill is on zero right so what's going to happen here if i zoom in you can see if, i don't know if i want to keep just outer glow or inner glow i think we'll just keep both maybe or we're going to go into inner glow here and lower the set, uh, the size down a little bit. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to lower the size down just about to about maybe like 11 or 10 or so. You can kind of choose which one. So basically for the duplication one, you're going to have your fill. All right, for the OG, 
let's go back to the og you're going to keep this one as like we had it before right then you're going to make a duplicate on that duplicate which is this one right here you're going to take your fill not your opacity the reason why we're lowering your fill down to zero not your opacity down to zero is because you lower your fill down to zero it takes whatever's on the image and lowers the fill down uh, or lowers the opacity down right however what happens is your effects table whichever whatever your layer styles are stay at 100 percent so it doesn't actually affect that it only affects the image itself so that way you can get some really cool little you know strokes and cool little things like this what's happening right now so what i'm going to do with this duplicated part here is i'm going to make a duplication of it again so control j right so i can save it as a copy so this is now a backup this is a duplication backup right just in case you ever mess up always make a backup and all that cool stuff um, even for me for this instance i'm gonna make a backup just in case you know and on this little duplication header uh text part we're gonna right click rasterize a layer style and that way it gives us the option to we're gonna make it a little more bigger so Control t to, uh, to free transform this looks pretty cool too it almost gives it like a little bit of a 3d feel um th th there's something you can pay attention to if you guys don't want to do whatever i'm doing right now make it just a little bit bigger so i'm taking the edge here right i'm gonna do it again i'm taking this corner here i'm holding alt and shift on my keyboard and making it bigger like so so it keeps in the same orientation and i'm gonna press enter and for me this wasn't random enough what i had ended up doing was i pressed Control t again and i right clicked and used warp and i went in here and then i just took some sides and just warped them just a bit we'll take the e over here i want to bring this down or i want to bring the e up and the d down like take this just like so kind of looks pretty cool and then all that did was just kind of make it more random for me and i felt like that looked pretty dope pretty cool so now what i can do is not just i'm not gonna erase it right uh, regularly how i just take my eraser and go back because if i ever want to if i ever want to fill it in certain spots and kind of test different things out it won't be as easy as just using this little masking tool here i just made i just realized what i did um right we're gonna click on this little uh, uh this little layer mask right here so if i click on this what happens is I can use a brush or an eraser, doesn't really matter. Whichever one, basically see how the it's oh, the white uh, is a white background right now. If I use a black brush, it'll it'll change it automatically, by the way. It won't ever change your original foreground colors once you click back on the thumbnail, as you can see. I'm at my yellow, my purple, but as soon as I click on the layer mask right here, it'll change it to white and black. So what happens here, if you have a white background, if you use a black brush, you'll end up erasing. So I want to go in here and I want to say to myself, I want to erase this right here, just to kind of give it this really cool little uh I don't know, randomness feel. Like right here, I don't like how that looks anyway, so I'm gonna delete that. I don't like how this looks anyway, so I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a stroke there. I don't like how this looks. And just erase it in a few spots just to make it look pretty cool and random as well, still. Uh, I don't really like how that is right there. And then on this R here, since I erased more of the uh, bottom left, I'm gonna make sure I keep a lot of the bottom right to kind of balance that out. And we're gonna say erase this, and we're gonna erase this inner line here. And then maybe even erase this. I'm gonna go back with the brush. So the reason being why you are using this layer mask, by the way, let's say if you you say to yourself like, ah, oh, dang it, uh, I, I didn't wanna erase all this in the E. What I would do is just change the color to white now. And then what happens when you click on the layer mask still, and you put it back in with the white, it'll fill it back in for you. So it gives you a very nice loose sort of terms of uh, erasing. It gives you a nice cool, I had to say maybe a handicap, right? To kind of go back and fix it. Um, but yeah, once you say you're, you feel like you erased enough and made it look as cool and random as possible, let's just say also, uh, also, <laughs> also the neon, subtext needs to move up a little bit so now what i'm going to do here is on this layer right here the duplication layer we're going to make a new layer so make sure you select the layer because you want to have it right above that duplicated uh header text right and then when i click mask this layer to that duplicated layer which is that stroke layer we're going to call this now not header dupe we're going to call this header stroke right so on this layer 11 which is a new layer right above it clip mask on the same exact yellow we're going to be using we're just going to simply just click and highlight some of these uh these lines here you don't have to highlight all of them i almost highlighted pretty much all of them on my uh, example just kind of have that really cool contrast but you can leave a little bit of blue if you guys want to right there maybe or i'm going to leave a little blue right here as well if you guys choose to you know because this gives you the option the only reason why i made a new layer is to give you that option to actually go ahead and you know keep a little bit of blue if you guys want to keep a little bit of blue or if you want to then you want to go back and erase so you can say hey i don't like how there's too much yellow here erase it if you guys want to and it has this really cool little contrast as well which helps out in the uh, final sort of part of the header right so now last thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take another duplicate of this little header og right so i'm gonna hold alt i'm gonna drag it below because alt and dragging also duplicates not just Control j and or dragging into the new uh layers table here or layer options so you're gonna have one of these i'm gonna drag it down so you can see what i'm doing right i'm gonna go ahead and take my fill lower it down to zero again and on this one i'm gonna turn off inner uh, glow and outer glow i'm gonna go back into effects 
or I'm going to turn on stroke. And on this stroke color here, you can make it, I, I was trying to personally figure out if I wanted to use a purple or a white. Uh, or, uh, you know, I have it on overlay, by the way, or linear dot I'm gonna put the opacity up so you can see a little more. If you want to use a purple, I'm gonna put it on normal as well. It doesn't really matter, right? Um, size at two, blend mode at normal, opacity at 100%. You can either choose to use a white or a purple. I used white last time, so I'm gonna use purple this time. And I'm gonna just put it up here, back over here, right? And make it a little more bigger. And I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and use the layer mask again, right? Take my black brush and then erase. Oops. That can't happen because it's a text and I had to rasterize it first. I apologize if I have to rasterize it. That's why we always over our fill down, rasterize it, and then make a layer mask. So if I'm going to do that really quickly over again, just in case it got lost, what it ended up doing with this stroke here, now I made it bigger by pressing Control T, uh, taking the corner, holding Alt and Shift, making it bigger like so. Draw, draw, uh, dragged it back up. I was trying to figure out the word to use. Uh, drag it back up. I'm going to make it a little more smaller, actually. Something like this. And then it's still text currently, so that means I can still go into it and uh, change it. I don't want to do that. I want to go ahead and rasterize this layer style. That way I can erase it without, as you see, adding a stroke to kind of like, uh, I guess, Copen Copensec, what the frick is the word? Uh, to, what's the C word that you use to like, it's like cope? Someone put it in the comments for me to remember. Um, basically to, to kind of like understand that if, if I'm erasing the text, it's going to also try to put a stroke on that erased text. So we don't want that anymore. So you rasterize that layer. Then we use a layer mask, take a black brush with the uh, soft brush here and erase a little bit just to kind of give it a nice little fun texture as well. And this is one of those other cool things you can do just to add texture. And this is like a way to elevate. If you ever figure out like, how do I elevate text? This is basically what it is. Just kind of adding things that make a little more sense and uh, can just be, you know, you know, really nice. I'm trying to figure out all the spots I want to erase them like this. I definitely want to erase this. I don't like how that little part is there. And then it has this really dope sort of like, like weaving in and out kind of like pattern thing. You can even try to put some stuff in front of the actual main text. I don't know. Let me see how that looks really quick. Doesn't look terrible. If you maybe use a white and not a purple, that can probably work. But right now this is pretty much all done for the text and we can move on now to the uh, final part. So I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, click over here on the top layer on the text and on the bottom layer of the text, control G, I'm going to call that text. So that way, if I ever need to move anything, I can move the entire group and we're all good to go. So to finalize this part right now, what we're going to do is we're going to be using the cool little, uh, what is it called? The ellipse tool, right? And we're not going to be using this tool here, not the marquee tool, the ellipse tool. <clears throat> or if you want to, you can use a rectangle tool as well. So it doesn't really matter, right? What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to have my rulers up at all times. So basically, if you guys want to use rulers, I'm going to go ahead and just make these over again, right? If you press control R on your keyboard, as you can see, control R uh, puts these little rulers up on the top and left side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the horizontal line first, the horizontal ruler, drag it down, right? And if you ever, you kind of figure out where the middle is, like it's, I believe the middle is like right around here. I'm, I'm looking over here, by the way, mo mostly to see like what the distance between this is. But I'm going to say like, where do I feel like the middle is? And you'll feel these little snaps. Just drag it right there and let it snap right toward there. And I'm going to do the same thing with the vertical line. I'm looking at the top part right, top right here, right? And I'm kind of figuring out like wherever the middle be. And I'm feeling this one snap right here. So I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just click and let it go. So that gives you the pretty much the, uh, the, the guest middle, but also very, very much more uh, accurate than kind of like trying to figure out where you put it, right? So then I can click in the middle of this crosshair with the ellipse, ellipse tool click and I'm gonna hold alt and shift that keeps in the same orientation holding shift creeps in the uh, holding alt excuse me keeps in the same orientation as you can see I'm letting go alt right now and then holding shift makes it a perfect circle so putting those two uh, combined makes a perfect circle also wherever you clicked originally first is where it would stay so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a pretty big circle first makes it even more bigger right because I want to make sure I have one on the outside and the inside oh I almost put it on the exact same spot it is the exact same spot look at that how do you guess that what the can we get a like for that? Holy shit. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, we put it in the exact same spot as last time just by guessing it. That's, I'm just going to say that's pretty damn cool. Um, anyway, right? So if you use the, I press U, by the way, to get back to that uh, ellipse tool, if you guys want to get that really quick shortcut in your head. So when you click on this layer, make sure you press U and then go up to this top part here. This is where you change your color if you guys want to change your color. Um, currently mine is yellow. I'm going to keep it yellow, of course, for now. And we're going to take this where it says PX. You can just drop this down, take the scroll bar and just pretty much scroll it to give you guys the, the width of the stroke that you guys want to have. I'm going to say 35 is pretty good. I have no idea what the actual one is, but we're going to say 35 is pretty good right now. So for this first song I'm going to do is I'm going to add the uh, paste the layer styles. If you guys already had your other ones copied, you should just paste the layer styles. Basically, if you guys don't, it's inner glow and outer glow. So I'm going to go back into inner glow, change this to yellow. This is where you want to change things to yellow right for the inner glow because of course that's what we want to have and then for the outer glow of course it's blue currently i'm going to change it to yellow as well 
and we're also going to change the size to be a little bit more exaggerated so maybe like mm, 29 30 opacity is pretty good as well as getting a pretty nice yellow going out as well so if you guys want to know what i did right for the yellow bar here whatever color you're using if you're using a blue this is where you put your blue bar you know whatever color scheme you're working with is just put an inner glow and an outer glow that kind of you don't even have to worry about what the color is of the stroke because your inner glow and your outer glow are both going to be basically um covering the entire like actual stroke we're just going to worry about the the glows right now so realistically your inner glow is kind of like your color overlay and whatnot right if you guys want to think about it that way um so now i'm going to do i'm going to press Control j and make a duplicate of this i'm going to press Control t to free transform and we're gonna make a, another one just like so, right? So for this one, we wanna have this one be purple. We don't wanna have two yellow ones. We're gonna go to inner glow again, change this to purple, right? And then change the outer glow to purple. So you see how the inner the is white, uh, yellow right now? I'm already gonna fix that as well. Uh, let's change this to purple as well. What, what are we looking at? Like right about here is pretty good. So inner glow, I'm gonna take this, just drag it even more, and it'll kinda get rid of that little yellow. And pretty much press okay. As you can see, we're looking pretty good. I think the, the purple's a little bit different. Yeah, this one's a lot more, uh, I was like up here a little bit, wasn't I? Yeah, I was more up toward like the pink area. So that looks pretty good. The yellow looks pretty good. I don't really, I want to care about the tech, uh, the color right now too much. We're not going to go into it, but when you're doing your own color scheme, make sure you guys keep it as, is as good as possible, as coped as possible. Anyway, now that you have the stroke here, the stroke here, and the stroke here, I only, I believe I did a cool little stroke in the inside as well. So I'm going to make another duplicate with control J with this ellipse tool for the purple. And then for this one, what did I just do? Why did I just only take a copy of it? That's how, that was kind of weird, wasn't it? I'm going to just shrink this in a little bit, right? To give it like this. I'm going to press the U on my keyboard to bring up that ellipse tool again. Take the stroke size, just lower it down a little bit. I don't want it to be too big. As well as if you guys want to, you can really change the, the size of these. I didn't do it before, but I was thinking about doing it. If you guys want to change the size a little bit to make it more like, you know, bigger stroke on the outside, a little more skinnier, a little more skinnier. If you guys want to do that, it's a pretty cool idea. But for this, I'm going to make it fairly skinny. Uh, I'm going to change everything. All the layers are still the same and whatnot, right? If I want to, I kind of want to make it just a little bit more. So even like 13 or so, right? Just a little bit more. And then each time you do this, before you do this, right? Make another duplicate because you're going to need another one, right? So I'm going to make this yellow for a second. That's a, that's a duplicated one. So control J it, leave it, make it a different color. Just know that it's there for you guys to choose to, and move it because we're going to need another one in a second, like I said, right? And I want to rasterize this one. So once you rasterize it, you can then, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the rectangle marquee tool. So whatever font you're using, just basically go like an inch away. So I'm going to go an inch away from the top, inch away from the bottom, and go all the way across, and I'm press delete. Right? That's why I know for sure that it's at least, at least both kind of like, um, you know, erase in that sense. I'm going to take a soft erase, uh, soft brush. If you wanted to, you could have probably just literally went like this. I just wanted to make sure it was as even as possible. But this, that's what I did before. So I'm going to kind of erase it like so and just make it a little more different. I'm not going to give them the same exact size. Just make it a little more different, right? On this duplicated one that you created before, control T, bring this in as well. I'm going to make this a little more smaller. This one, actually, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, uh, if you guys never knew this idea, if you take the movement tool and you hold control, if you're on the movement tool, right? I'm just gonna put it on Q for a second, or not Q, I'm gonna put it on T for text. You can't do this, it won't work, right? If I'm seeing me trying to click, look at right here. I'm trying to click and move that one over here. If you're using the move tool, which is V on your keyboard, the top tool right here, and you hold control, I'm still selected on this one right here, as you can see. Hold control, click, you can actually select things very quickly and find things very quickly. So if you ever see me do that, that's what I'm doing. The uh, reason why I did that, by the way, is I want to take this yellow. I want to copy this layer style to make this purple line a yellow line, right? So paste this layer style over there. Now it's yellow, right? Now I can go ahead and rasterize this, take my soft brush eraser, and just make it cool and different and just erase it in different spots to make it look just nice and unique, right? There we go. Now, almost basically the last thing, right? is we're going to take this line right here, the yellow line again. We're going to make a duplicate of this one, so control J. Reason being is we're going to turn off the effects, right? We're going to take them off. Right now, as you can see, it's just a yellow line, right? I'm going to go press the U on my keyboard to bring up the ellipse tool again. Take my size, and you see from this distance here, it's right here currently. I want to make sure it goes all the way to the purple line. So I'm going to take my size, and I'm going to drag this all the way until it gets to the purple line, which is around 369 for me. Um, basically, right now it's a basic, a cool little uh, yellow sort of line. We're gonna do is we're gonna drag it below everything, and I don't know if I dragged it below. I did not drag it below. Oops, let me just change this back to three six nine. I actually went back on an accident. Please, three six nine, three. Cool. Now I'm gonna drag this below this layer here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rasterize the layer just like so. Rasterize layers, uh, layer style and whatnot. 
And then what you can do with this, once you rasterize, you can press Control U on your keyboard. It gives you the option to bring up the hue and uh, saturation table. You take your lightness all the way down to zero. It'll make it black, obviously, right? All the way down to zero, all the way zero lightness would be black, right? And then what you can do is you just take your opacity, change it to blend mode, normal, uh, change it to blend mode overlay, I, uh, I apologize. And then take your opacity and lower it down to where you believe, oh, don't change your, uh, your overlay opacity, change your uh, fill opacity because we're gonna be using a, a pattern overlay. So you wanna keep your, your uh, overlay opacity, excuse me, I apologize. You wanna keep your black stroke opacity all the way at 100% because we're gonna be using a pattern which requires the pattern to be sure it's at that full, I guess you would say that full uh, opacity because you don't wanna change your opacity, you wanna change your fill, like we said before, little thing we did with the whole little stroke thing over there, right? I'm gonna take the fill and lower it down to like 35%. That way, I'm gonna show you guys an example of what I'm talking about because I got probably confusing, right? If you take your fill, 35%, make sure it's black, right? So you have this really cool little like dark spot right here. Take a pattern, or if you have a texture of your own, go ahead and choose a texture. I'm gonna choose blend mode multiply, press okay, right? I'm gonna show you guys what's happening. You see this little, you see this little pattern here? That's what I'm, that's, that's what I'm referring to. I'm gonna click, make this a little bit more bigger to make sure it can be seen from a farther distance. And I would say that's pretty good. If I need to, I can lower the opacity even more on this. I'm gonna say I do. I'm gonna say 15% is pretty good, right? And I can see it very much. I can see the little strokes if I'm like paying attention to it. Right now it's just texture, it's just adding to it. But let me just show you guys if, I, this, if the, the rolls are flipped. If you made the opacity 15, right? Fill, 100%, opacity 15. As you can see, you can't actually see the pattern overlay because it's, it's also lowering the opacity of the pattern overlay. So you wanna make sure your opacity is at 100%. And your fill is what you're changing to 15. So that's the difference between you know what I was referring to before. So once you've had that, you can then go ahead and make a new layer. This time I'm going to use the ellipse marquee tool. Make sure I have my rulers. I can click in the middle, hold Alt and Shift, right? And we're going to we're going to fill this in, right? Fill this in, right? Right click fill, and uh, black, just like so. And we're going to take this. Is there a feather on this? Why is there a feather on this? Uh, oh, it's up here. Why? Yeah, there's no feather supposed to be on that. I apologize. Make sure you have no feather on. As you saw, I saw that was a little bit of a, how do I say it was a blurry line? So that means that there's a feather on there. So right click, fill, drop down, use color black on the new layer. Press OK. For some reason, there's still a freaking, f what the? I don't know. I'm not going to worry about that right now. It's not supposed to be though. So besides using a lips tool then, I'm going to just use the, uh, the, not the marketing tool, I'm use a lips tool. I don't know why it didn't change. Cause I don't want it to have like a, I don't want it to do that. So for this, if you had to do that personally, I'm gonna use to make sure the stroke is turned off. That's what that white slash box is with the red slash is me, right? Take my fill, make this black, just like so. Oops, I didn't change it, I didn't switch it, there we go. Make my fill black and there we go. I want a solid like, I don't know, I don't know why I was giving me that option. I, I, I gotta check that out. Um. Anyway, so for this, I'm gonna rasterize this in this case. That way I can lower the opacity, or excuse me, before I do that, change my blend mode from uh, normal to overlay, take my opacity, lower it down. That also gives me this nice little, so you see how this like consistent contrast is going on here. If you guys want to, you can use 15 as well, but uh, it needs to be as like close to the darkness as this. So 30 pretty much looked pretty, pretty good. You know what I mean? Right, so that looks pretty okay. Arm even make a little bit darker, like 40 maybe. That looks pretty good. Now what you're gonna do is I'm gonna take my eraser, or if you guys want to use a select mask here, the layer mask, Take a black brush and erase a little bit, right? And then I'm gonna do some make a duplicate of this because Control J, make a duplicate of the same exact thing you just erased, and just make it a little more smaller. And then since I erased the same exact corner, I'm gonna rotate it simply to kind of give it that really cool little, uh, you know, just different look to it. And I, I don't like how this is. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger on both of them. And I think that's pretty good there. What I might do as well is I'm gonna take this uh, back circle here, so the one that I erased originally, I'm gonna erase it on the top right as well. Just to make it look as different as possible. I think that looks pretty good. Yep, it looks pretty good. Sweet. So, the one last thing I'm gonna personally do is I'm gonna show you guys what I did before. I'm gonna make it a little more different this time, is I'll make a new layer. I'm gonna use the rectangle marquee tool, right? Like I said, I have no idea why there's a feather going on. Um, even when I right click and use the feather, I have no idea. But we're just gonna, we're not gonna pay attention to that right now. We're gonna make this a little more bigger. What I'm gonna do is once I have this here, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna take my brush, my soft brush, Right, so the brush I'm using is soft brush, zero hardness basically. I'm gonna take my purple, and I'm just gonna give myself a couple of highlights. I didn't do this before, but I should have. You know, I'm gonna give myself yellow, purple highlights, control D to deselect, 
and as you can see using some really cool little highlights and if you want to do that across the entire board you pretty much can if it's not you know, it doesn't you don't have any restrictions to it or if you want to move it you guys can move it inner you know outer whatever you guys want to do for it i'm going to personally just leave it where i had it actually i don't want to leave it where the circle is right here i want to make it either away from it or inside what are you guys thinking i'm thinking like maybe inside oops i'm holding alt and control by the way and i'm moving in and if i'm gonna put it inside i'm gonna have to of course get rid of these hard edges just like so and i'll say it looks pretty good i don't like the yellow too much i wish i made them both purple in this case but i don't know that looks pretty good it looks really really nice here because it's a hard sort of uh shadow right here so what i might do is right over here on this one to see where it's race on that side this is where i can take that yellow brush or that white brush and give it that hard edge from before right and i'm gonna pretty much say that this is pretty damn good one well, last time i ended up doing was i made a new layer i used a soft brush again and i held alt and selected a really nice sort of like dullish purple which is around here for me if you guys want to select around here as well right and i'm gonna click on the inside just like so changes to linear dodge add and i'm gonna just give myself a couple of little highlights nice little glow there and as you can see, we are pretty much done. So, um, it wasn't too hard of a tutorial. It was pretty long, but I was just trying to get everything as you know smooth as possible for you guys. But what I really suggest you guys to do is take this as a foundation and just freaking skyrocket into something different and cool and new. And uh, what I also would do before I actually end up leaving you guys, if you want to make a CC for it, um, click on the first layer, hold shift on the last layer, control J to make a duplicate, then control E to merge it all together right click make it a smart object so you can always go back to the tc and change it right convert it to a smart object go to filter camera filter raw <clears throat> and if you want to get a different color or a different fun little sort of like i guess you know color correction you can change things by the way if you click on this little y down here you can see the before and after so i'm gonna look over here on the right hand side is the before or excuse me the after this is the left hand side of the before you can take your your you know your your temperature your tint your you know exposure if you need to mess with that a little bit more you need to mess with your contrast your your lights your shadows and all that cool stuff or for one instance you know your clarity get this really cool clarity look to it this looks really weird but if you're paying attention to it, i'm just trying to show you guys what you can do you can go to your hue adjust uh hue and adjustments layers and all that cool stuff you can turn change your uh, purples you know oops there we go you change your purples if you want to so if you're looking to try to figure out a color scheme you can use you can always go back into it and kind of like figure out you know what you really want to do by just going into here so i want to show you guys that just because if you guys don't know about that there's like that thing you can do but uh for now i'm going to leave it as so as clean as possible but uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today don't forget 200 likes on the video equals a series down below which mostly be the psd of the video as you see right here right now um if you guys want to see me any do some, anything see me do anything that's different or new or whatever you just see something you want to be like hey so so check this out just leave a comment down below and just give me like a, a good brief of what you kind of want to see and or tweet at me at so hq you can guys give me a follow all that cool stuff i think we're close to like what 14k now soon um yeah and if you're new to the channel of course if you're still here please leave a good old subscription just click that little bell icon all that cool stuff and i post every single week on a saturday so sunday i'm <laughs> gonna see you guys later so, so hq out don't forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later enjoy yourselves and enjoy this cool little neon header